When most people look at this, they see a joke of a video game's console, but when I look at it, I see a lot of unrealized potential. The Sega 32X is a really neat system that I like a lot, and I feel like it offers a lot to the Sega Faithful. There's actually quite a few hidden gems in this library, and so that's why today I wanted to talk about one of my favorites, Tempo for the Sega 32X. Tempo was developed by Red Company and published by Sega for the 32X in 1995. You play as the titular Tempo, a hip, groovin' grasshopper who's trying to stop King Dirge from stealing the rhythm from Planet Rhythmia. I think that's the story, because that's what it says on the back of the box, but the whole game is presented as a TV show, so who knows. Tempo suffers from what TV Tropes calls Angry Kirby Syndrome, where a cute video game character is made to look tough when released on North American shelves. This is the Japanese cover, with bright colors and an accurate portrayal of Tempo himself. This is the American cover, with dark colors and a whole lot of attitude. Not only does this do an injustice to the whimsical, colorful game, but it's also as ugly as the devil's face. The first thing that's going to strike you when you play Tempo is just how pretty it is. The game, like many 32X titles, is absolutely bursting with color and features incredibly fluid animation. Tempo looks and moves like an actual cartoon character with an impressive amount of personality conveyed in every frame of animation. As the name implies, a lot of Tempo's design is centered around music. The stages and enemies often feature some kind of musical influence, like one stage that features equalizers and drum pads as platforms, and scenery inspired by cassette tapes. When playing this level, I realized that there are a whole bunch of kids who this design would be lost on, and then I got sad. Tempo himself embodies the musical theme with his rad headphones and the fact that he's bouncing to the beat constantly. A very capable hero, Tempo can jump on top of his enemies or give them a kick to defeat them, plus he can throw music notes to stun them. Given the fact that there are a lot of enemies scattered throughout each level and they tend to pop out when you aren't expecting them, it's good to have so many options in combat. Finding special dance sections results in Tempo performing a screen-clearing ditty that will summon his girlfriend Katie. Katie is incredibly useful to have around because she doesn't take damage and will take out any enemy that Tempo stuns with his music notes. This even works on bosses, so trying to avoid damage and keeping Katie around as long as possible is paramount to having an easier time getting through the game. Plus, when Katie's around, all dance sections become a duet. There aren't a ton of power-ups in Tempo, but you can increase the amount of notes you throw by grabbing gloves, boost your total health meter by getting headphones, and grabbing a CD treats you to one of the most bizarre invincibility sequences I have ever seen. The game features six stages and three mini-games you can play by spinning coins you collect from the dance sequences. They too follow the game's musical focus, having you tap buttons with the rhythm to eat pizza, do cool poses, and break stuff by punching it. They're a funny distraction, and the punching game gives you Bruce points, which are the only kinds of points I want from now on. Now, Tempo is kind of a standard platformer, but it's the presentation that's the real draw here. It makes the game incredibly inviting, and you just want to keep playing to see what wacky thing the game is going to throw at you next. And my wife is not even a real big Sega fan, and she couldn't put it down, and in fact, all the gameplay footage that you're seeing in this episode was captured from her playing through it. As I said before, Tempo is pretty stunning visually, and it's hard not to gawk at it while playing. You just get punched in the face with color, and it's super refreshing to see after drowning in the brown and gray of modern games. Sometimes, though, the game does go a little overboard. One stage has the equivalent of a Windows Media Player visualizer in the background, and it gets incredibly distracting. People who are sensitive to that kind of stuff should be careful, because it gets really hard to look at after a while. The game controls well enough, but moving tempo around does take some getting used to. His default walk is painfully slow, but by double tapping a direction he takes off into a sprint. It's almost too fast though, and hitting any scenery at full speed smashes him into it and brings you to a screeching halt. Still, he's got a lot of neat moves, especially his hover, which lets you glide around obstacles and create some really cool vertical platforming sections. The game is pretty tough, as enemies frequently pop out of the level architecture where you can't reach them until it's too late. 
even on the easy difficulty setting the game is a challenge. And that's not a knock on the game, especially since you can use passwords to save your progress, but don't expect the game to be a walk in the park just because it looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. And now that I'm saying that, I really want to see a tempo Saturday morning cartoon. Of course, since the game is all about music, it's got some great tunes, including the catchy intro theme that I find myself humming constantly, even if I haven't touched the game in weeks. You know what time it is. Yo, homie, peep beer! Tempo, check it out, you know, he makes it funky, and he's good to go. Oh, bang, catch the boom with New York, L.A., and San Francisco. The house tonight, you know it's gonna move your mind. The groove is out of sight. The groove is out of sight. Funky as you wanna be, tempo's in the house tonight. Tempo's in the house. You know it's gonna move your mind. The groove is out of sight. The groove is out of sight. Funky as you wanna be. One thing that's kind of neat but kind of infuriating at the same time is the way the bosses can turn things around on you. When you beat a boss, you do a dance number to celebrate, but if they beat you, well, you've kind of just got to sit there and take your medicine. But that's just another example of the game's personality bursting through the seams. Small touches like the producer guy cleaning you up before you hit the main stage to tackle a boss add so much charm to the game that even when it gets hard, you keep smiling because the game itself is just so quirky and cheerful that you can't stay mad at it. Tempo apparently did well enough to spawn two sequels, Tempo Jr. for the Game Gear and Super Tempo for the Saturn. While Tempo Jr. made it to North America as part of the Sega Club Kids game line, Super Tempo never left Japan. I am going to seek out both games eventually. Like every game I talk about, Tempo isn't going to cost you very much, with a loose cart running about $15. The game's humor and presentation alone are enough to justify the asking price, but the fact that it's a solid platformer to boot just seals the deal. Tempo is rough around the edges to be sure. The controls are a little sloppy in some cases, and the difficulty can turn players off if they're not ready for it. Despite those flaws though, it's a really enjoyable game from both a gameplay and presentation standpoint. It's not the game that's going to sell you a 32X, that's Knuckles Chaotix but it's a really good game that can tip the scales if you're on the fence about picking one up. If you have a 32X already, then Tempo is a total no-brainer.